Um, just before we start this episode of the podcast, we've got a very exciting announcement, so make sure you stay along to the end. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Politics Relax podcast. Um, back. Um, and we're talking a bit more about social issues uh, for the next few weeks uh, because uh, news is not as frequent since we're in lockdown. Um, but today we've got uh, me, I'm Felix, uh, we've got Rajan, we've got uh, Lily, we've got Piers and we've got uh, Cameron. Uh, we're gonna, today we're going to focus on um, marijuana, whether we should legalise it and Black Lives Matter. Uh, so we'll start with um, Black Lives Matter. Uh, let's talk about, because I think there's two different ways you can take Black Lives Matter. You can take it as the organisation or you can take it as um, more like the movement in general, the anti-racism movement. Uh, so does anybody have an opinion um, on uh, Black Lives Matter that they want to start with? I just want to say that I support Black Lives Matter in its entirety, not only the statement, but like, um, but also the movement. However, on the other hand, like the organisation, I don't know enough about it to say that I like, can offer my complete support. But like some of the ethos surrounding it, I definitely do support. But then some of like the more like extreme things that they put forward, like, I find a bit questionable, but I understand it's all coming from a place of like complete frustration and that like I respect that completely and I respect everything that comes from that. Yeah, for sure. Um, When you talk about um, extreme uh, things, uh, like uh, what do you, can you bring any like specific issues up uh, that you maybe disagree with or not so supportive of? Well, in in my like uh, opinion, I don't find them extreme, but they have been criticised for being extreme. So like the removal of like statues and things like that, like it was done quite forcibly and it came across as quite violent. But I understand that those statues shouldn't be there. We shouldn't glorify people who are slave owners, no matter how yeah. important they were during history. Yeah, for sure. And um, if I think you that's... are going to glorify them, why do you not celebrate? Why do you not celebrate? Um, like people of colour that were equally as important in history and did much better things for society than those people. Yeah, you raise up, you raise two really um, interesting and important points. Uh, I'm sure everyone has a lot to talk about on the uh, statues issue, uh, me included. Uh, I supported taking down uh, the statue because it's civil disobedience and it's not really causing anybody harm. There's like, there's no real harm caused in taking down a statue and it's a very symbolic um moves that got them a lot of publicity so in that way i'd say it was positive uh maybe in the way they would did it was uh, not fair but um people might ask oh well like they should have done it democratically well they did try they tried to get a vote through um uh but it uh went against them uh so uh, they took matters into their own hands and took down the statues um cameron do you want to uh, say something about the any of the points raised yeah well for me, I think I, I agree with Lily on, on her point about some of the more extreme views. Um, for me, the most Im- important, the most vivid extreme view that is um, promoted by the Black Lives Matter organisation and movement, and let's not forget, this is essentially a political organisation nowadays. You know, they, they've commented as an organisation on issues such as Palestine, and issues such as police funding is a political issue. Um, whether you agree or not. And, and this is the key point for me. I fundamentally think it is uh, wrong to be suggesting that we should defund the police in the UK. What, ha- what happened, what the event with George Floyd, was a terrible event. And, and there have been many instances of terrible events of, uh, of, of racism, of police violence in America. Um, and, and perhaps there are examples of that here in the UK as well. But there is nowhere near enough sufficient evidence to promote defunding the police in this country. And also, the point about statues, I do not think it's correct to be tearing down statues. I do not think it's correct to be vandalising a statue of Winston Churchill. I do not think it's correct to be vandalising the cenotaph. No, I think that's all wrong. And, and as, as much as Edward Colston, for example, he was, in essence, a figure involved in, in slave trading. I think that there are better ways of trying to get down a statue. Campaigning, perhaps to have people more educated about some, some of his views, or to campaign to have the statue removed. 
but do not go tear down a statue and throw it in the river. I don't believe that's correct. Yeah, um, I don't like disagree with you uh, too much, but on the defunding the police point, I think uh, that you've uh, taken this slogan without reading into it as much and uh, just said, oh, well, I don't agree with defunding the police. I don't agree with defunding the police. I agree with changing funds and fundamentally uh, changing the way the police works. Because unfortunately, in black communities, the police, it's not about community policing. It's about stop and searches. They, every day, black males are stopped and searched way more often than any other uh, group. And I think that's why people are talking about defunding the police. They're not really talking about taking money out of the police because I don't think that's right either. But what I think is there needs to be more, um, more into um, uh, youth-led uh, uh, groups in the community, community groups uh, and um, community policing. And that's what needs to be the focus for the Met Police. Uh, and other police forces around the UK. It's not necessarily about defunding the police, but it's more about changing the direction of the police. Uh, Piers, do you want to uh, say something about uh, what we're talking about? Uh, yeah, um, sure. I I support the statement, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Do Matter, anyone who disagrees is just wrong. Um, but the movement is... Uh, I. I cannot support it fully because I just don't think that they should. I mean, I understand that like police killing anyone is wrong. Like that should just, yeah, that's bad. But um, I feel like once these people have died, as unfortunate as that is, and a lot of them are criminals, uh, people are glorifying them. Um, and, and, that's not a good thing. You don't glorify criminals. That goes against what Martin Luther King said in his uh, dream. They, they have, the leaders have said they are Marxists. That's a bad thing. Yeah, um, I'll go to Cameron in a second. I just want to kind of respond uh, to that point. There was uh, two points uh, really in there. I'll address the first one about uh, causing disruption. Well, of course, every protest movement causes a disruption, but I think a lot of it is blaming the violent protesters. You're taking 2%, according um, according to a study, 98% of uh, Black Lives Matter protesters were peaceful. Uh, you're taking 2%, a very, very small mi minority of a political group, uh, and uh, you're... Um, you're, t you're categorizing the whole group as uh, violent, which I just think is really unfair, especially when the counter protesters turned up with guns and were trying to incite violence. Um, if I'll uh, address your second point about um, glorifying criminals. Well, first of all, um, uh, Breonna Taylor, let's take that example, still justice has not, um, she had not received justice of being shot in her bed with a no-knock warrant, or am I mean a quick-knock warrant, I'm not sure. Um, still, but uh, she's still not received any justice and every single one of the police officers that shot her, an innocent person, uh, is still serving uh, uh, in the, is serving in the uh, police force. So we're not glorifying the criminals necessarily. And even if they are very petty criminals and they've died, they don't, they're not being glorified. They've died and people want to see justice for the people that have died. It's quite a simple point, really. And thirdly, I'll address uh, the point about uh, Marxism, because I just um, I think that was a terrible PR move uh, from Black Lives Matter. They should not have admitted that. And I think it really alienated a lot of people. So that's probably one of my main problems with Black Lives Matter. And they admitted that they were Marxists because they shouldn't be turning this into this should not really be a political um, political point, uh, political um movement it should be about getting justice for, pe for people that have killed being killed by police racism and it should be about trying to create a more equal society it's not it should not be politicized as much as it has been uh i'll go to peers just because uh, yeah i'm just saying this really quickly um i saw something that's uh that said uh, more people have died in these in in the violent protests of because of uh the violence on both sides by Antifa and the and the alt right, who have participated in it, then uh, black people have been killed by police officers in the last ten years. So I just um, by so you're talking about Biden protests. Well, first of all, I'll take you up on. I'll just um, quickly make a point about that. Um, just to respond because uh, Antifa haven't really been involved in the Black Lives Matter protests in the U.S. Uh, it's been Black Lives Matter themselves. Um, and uh, according to Vice, this is, uh, but that was just a quick one. Uh, Cameron, I'll go to you and then to Lily. 
Yeah, so I've got um, a couple of points to make. Firstly, I want to tackle the, uh, the stop and search point that Felix made earlier, because I believe that stop and search is a good thing. I, I really do. I think it's important in our society that we have stop and search in order to um, make sure that we detect suspicious behaviour properly and we tackle it properly. And what I would say is, um, yes, black people are disproportionately targeted by these stop and searches. It's true. But it's also the case, and I hate to say this, but it is true, that in 2017, uh, for example, Home Office figures stated that uh, you that black people committed eight times more violent crime uh, nationwide across the UK than than white people. So what we're looking at here is um, an issue where if you're a policeman and if you're walking around your community uh, and you're seeing more black people committing violent crime, you are naturally more likely to stop and search black people. And I think that's fair and I think that's, I think that's justified. Uh, it's, I don't believe it's anything to do with racism, to be honest. Um, Lily, do you want to respond to it? And then I would also like to respond to it, but yeah, go. Yeah, so I have a response to um, one of, uh, so yeah, Cameron's point. So I don't, like, I agree with that. If you see someone who's suspicious, you're a policeman, you're going to stop and search them. But the problem is people are being stopped, not because they're looking suspicious, just because they're black. Like, it's not because they look like they're committing a crime. Like, there is, like, significant factors of Oh, I'm not saying this is every officer who does stuff in searches, but there are like significant numbers of, of police officers who have stopped black people who have not like committed any crimes and have not been acting suspicious. And um, I just wanted to say, in response to Piers's point, um, you're saying you're glorifying criminals, right? But even if that person has committed a crime, say, like you're not meant to be killed when you're arrested. Like, even if you have committed a crime, you're meant to be arrested. You're not meant to be killed. Yeah. Well, obviously, okay, no, wait, I need to clarify my point there. Okay. Obviously, if the police officer is in danger and it's like, a, like the person has a weapon or something, then I feel like in some cases it is justified. But in like smaller crimes, like these people were accused of, that, that yeah. doesn't justify their death in any way yeah. at all. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm just going to respond to uh, Cameron's point there. Um, there's a very big difference here. Because more black people commit crimes does not mean a black person is, of course it does, but a black person is not more likely to commit a crime because they are black. So therefore you're still racially profiling people. And why is a 13 year old black kid going to be committing a crime? It doesn't really make that much sense to search them, right? But police officers still do it all of the time and it's absolutely ridiculous and it needs to be changed and there needs to be body cams I think on every single police officer especially people who are doing stop and searches to make sure that it's not racially motivated and they should have at least some sort of reason to stop and search uh, somebody um, and now I'll let Cameron respond to both those points because they were directly at him. Yeah so uh, the point I would make first once again, responding to the stop and search point, is, is I'm not saying that, look, I don't, you can't, unfortunately, tell, the, you can't, you can't just look at a black and a white person and say, they're exactly the same. They're not, their skin colour is different. That's an, the obvious difference. And they may be the same in every other way. And, but if you're a policeman and you do see more black people committing violent crime, you're going to, be, you might naturally be more suspicious of black people. And that's not right necessarily, I don't think that's, that's right, but I think it's just based off personal experience from, for, from these police officers. Um, and another thing I wanted to bring into this a little bit was that I've seen plenty of videos since the Black Lives Matter protest started um, of police officers being stopped doing their work by members of the public who are then abusing them while they are trying to stop and search and when they find a knife they're still being abused and it's like they've found a weapon they have dis they have stopped this guy from committing a crime why are members of the public going up to them and abusing them for doing their job i think that's wrong we need to show more respect to our police officers in this country they are doing 
the best they can possibly do nearly 100% of the time for these communities. And we have to really start paying our respects to them and let them get on with their job. Of course, we need proper reviews and inquiries into incidents of racism. And I, would not, I wouldn't at all oppose the idea of body cams uh, on police officers to make sure that, we are, that, that our police officers are behaving entirely responsibly the entire time. But it, it doesn't change the point that these are still the people doing their job uh, for the good of our communities. And we should not stand in the way of them doing that or make their jobs more difficult, especially when what they're doing is discovered to be correct. Yeah, um, I do agree uh, with uh, Cameron's point. I do think that police officers do do a, hard a very hard job uh, for not that much pay and they are underappreciated. Um, but let's just move on now uh, to Cameron. Yeah, um, I am quite pro uh, legalizing cannabis, although I would never smoke it myself. <laughs> I just want to make that clear. <laughs> but um, there are kind of a few different reasons I think can be quite quickly summed up in the reason, uh, in, for the reason that um, I want to uh, legalize uh, cannabis. Uh, so first of all, I'll talk about um, kind of uh, the dangers of uh, cannabis at the minute. Uh, right now, it's produced in, not in uh, clean um, warehouses, uh, but in like people's uh, basements, people's uh, bedrooms, that is not safe. And they've been increasing the level of THC, which is the potent form, uh, the potent like uh, part of cannabis compared to the CBT, which is CBD, sorry, um, which is the, um, it's kind of like counteracts uh, the THC and it's slowly been getting higher, which um, is, uh, which, sorry, uh, which, um, which means that um, weed is more dangerous. Um, it can increase uh, psychosis, uh, for example. Uh, weed is not an addictive uh, substance, physically or mentally addictive. Um, therefore, it's, that is just another reason. And then finally, I think uh, gang culture, especially in the UK, uh, more people have been dying from uh, knife crime. And a lot of that is due to um, like turf wars uh, on where they can deal drugs. So if we decriminalize cannabis, um, it would uh, lead to less of these uh, stabbings. And um, finally, uh, taxpayers have spent £2.5 billion uh, pounds detaining uh, people for cannabis offences. And imagine that money plus a 25% tax on cannabis, which we could fund uh, drug teaching more, which would uh, have a positive impact on, um, on the uh, kind of drugs market, I think. Uh, so I am pro-legalising cannabis. Does anybody want to make a point on uh, why we should. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I agree with everything you said. Everything you said is pretty much correct. And if we talk about the differences, uh, the effects of cannabis. Cannabis is a drug, and if when you compare it to another drug such as alcohol, in comparison, cannabis is a lot more. It's more of a relaxant drug rather than alcohol, which alcohol is sort of it stimulates aggression in people, uh, whereas cannabis is relaxant, more social, more calming effects. And if you think about crime as well, if someone's on alcohol, a person intoxicated with alcohol is so much more likely to commit a crime, a violent crime, causing to deaths or assault or even rape on women and men so much more likely of that and alcohol than cannabis and that's why cannabis it's pretty unfortunate than can that cannabis has been given a bad rep in society nowadays if you look at the netherlands netherlands is a completely decriminalized cannabis uh